We're going to begin in Carolina, where Cam Newton, the quarterback of the Panthers, has been placed on injured reserve more than seven weeks after suffering a foot injury. Well, aggravating the foot injury. He suffered it in the preseason. He rushed himself back for week one. They had the short week game against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, lost to the Rams on the opening Sunday, lost to the Bucs, and then Cam Newton ended up out. He admitted that he had essentially hid the severity of the injury from the team. He hasn't played since, and now he won't play for at least eight more weeks, and that puts us into the postseason. And by then, if the Panthers make it, I don't know that you want to go back to Cam Newton. I think the goal here is shut him down, let him heal, and then in the offseason MDS, a decision will have to be made about the future of Cam Newton in Carolina. Yeah, and to me, that's really the most interesting part of all of this is not just is Kyle Allen the quarterback for the rest of this year, but is Kyle Allen the quarterback of the future and the, and the Panthers? And if he's not, that still might not mean that Cam Newton is the quarterback of the future. Even if Kyle Allen doesn't play well the rest of the way, maybe the Panthers decide to draft a quarterback, to sign a different quarterback. Cam Newton has one year left on his contract at a, at a salary that's affordable by uh, NFL starting quarterback salaries. I mean, it, there are plenty of teams that could trade for him get his salary under the salary cap in 2020 and then work on either a long-term deal or franchise him the next year. Now we're getting two years ahead, so maybe that's a little too far, but it's a really interesting question, and it is, in fact, possible Cam Newton has played his very last game as the quarterback of the Carolina Panthers. His salary for next year is downright cheap in comparison to current starting quarterback standards. $18.6 million. They have a $2 million cap charge for option bonus proration, a $500,000 workout bonus. So the total cash payout is $19.1 million. And if there's somebody else out there that wants him, it really is an affordable contract. And I think one of the big factors will be what – will owner David Tepper do after the season? There was a very telling moment in the All or Nothing series when Tepper explains in the last episode, the league is set up for teams to go 8-8, eight and eight, and it's up to them to push it north of that or south of that. And a franchise quarterback is key, but getting a good coach, getting a good GM is a difference maker. Well, David Tepper didn't buy the Panthers for the privilege of employing Marty Herney as GM and Ron Rivera as head coach. He inherited them. If he decides after this year it's time to make changes and go out and maybe try to buy an upgrade at either or both spots, those new people, general manager and or head coach, may want their own quarterback. They may want Cam Newton for one more year. They may want their own person. So there's decisions that need to be made after the season that are going to be influenced by how the Panthers do the rest of the season that will have a major impact, MDS, on whether or not Cam Newton is with the team in 2020. Yeah, and David Tepper has not owned the Panthers for long enough for us to have a good idea of how patient is he with his football people. Is he going to be the type of owner who believes in his guys and gives them a long time to build a team? Or is he going to be the type of owner who says, if you don't impress me this year, you're gone next year? And if it's the latter, we could see all kinds of changes in Carolina. And I would also throw out, David Tepper is really rich, even by NFL owner standards. Um, the you know the when, when you get into the many billions, it's sometimes hard to even wrap your head around how rich he is. But suffice to say, cash flow isn't an issue for him. He doesn't care how much is still owed on Ron Rivera's contract, that type of thing. He doesn't care how much he would have to pay to maybe lure a. a uh, one of the best coaches who some people think are, are retired or a coach out of college or whoever he thinks is the right coach for him, he can spend the money easily to get the right coach for him. So it's one of the most interesting situations to monitor. Um, he might also be a coach who would tell his general manager, I want you to spend a lot of money on a free agent quarterback and your job hinges on impressing me. And so you know, it, it'll be really interesting to see, but there are a lot of ways that the Panthers franchise could go this offseason. 
One last observation as it relates to David Tepper. He was a minority owner of the Pittsburgh Steelers, and he's a Pittsburgh guy. And Kevin Colbert, the GM of the Steelers, is on essentially a year-to-year arrangement with Pittsburgh. He could leave the Steelers after the draft and join David Tepper in Carolina if that's what Tepper wants. And you mentioned retired coaches that are out there. Bill Cowher has been out of the loop for so long, we don't even think of him as a potential head coaching candidate. I think one of the reasons he quit when he did was because he knew he was never going to get true market value in Pittsburgh. And I think his plan initially was to eventually come back and get whatever the most money is for coaches in the NFL. I don't know that Tepper would give him that, but maybe that's a spot where he could be lured to come out of retirement if that's something that Tepper wants. But you're right, it all comes down to what Tepper wants. And he did not buy that team because he wanted to say, I have on the payroll Marty Herney and Ron Rivera. They just happened to be there when the new boss arrived. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.